Okay, it is six o'clock. I believe we're live. So, um, so welcome and good evening. This is the fifth virtual and the eighth in total comp plan workshop. And this one is about the roadway classification map and today's date is June 9th. I'm going to turn this over to Brandon Mark. He is uh, the lead on the process for the city's comp plan and he's a division manager of community planning and urban design. Brandon will introduce the others on the staff and the subject matter experts. Um, and before I turn it over, let me just say that the process is this. The staff will present a summary of the revisions to the current roadway classification map. Then there'll be uh, questions and comments from the Planning Commission. And since there's no policies, there's just this one bulk of work to talk about. Um, we will then have a discussion and we will uh, open it up for any public comment. If there is anyone on the line that wants to call in for public comment, the call in number is 929-229-5669. And there is a passcode associated with this and you can see it up on the screen now. It's 298-099-226 pound. So um, let me next do a roll call of the commissioners and then, then I'll turn it over to Brandon Mark. Uh, Commissioner Manalis. Commissioner Manalis is present. Alderman Russell. Alderman Russell present. And we know that Commissioner Burns and Commissioner Strawson are not able to be with us tonight. And I am Commissioner Nicholas, so we do have a quorum. And with that, I will turn it over to Brandon Mark. Thank you. Thank you all for um, being in uh, attendance this evening. Thank you, commissioners, for volunteering all your time on this effort. Um, I know this plan is going to be great because of uh, all the time that we've spent uh, together discussing this. <clears throat> um, thank you for everyone uh, watching us virtually on YouTube. So, uh, Commissioner Nicholas uh, stated this is our eighth workshop and uh, we have one more workshop before staff presents the um, Planning Commission draft at a workshop in public hearing. Um, that last workshop will be the proposed land use map and that will be held on uh, June 22nd at 6 p.m. Um, this evening with us um, as far as staff Looks like we have uh, David Edmondson, the city transportation planner, uh, Charian Epen, the city traffic engineer, Scott Helgeson uh, with DPW, and I believe Joe may be joining us and Arash has taken the evening off. So. Okay, so we do need to do a group swearing in. Um, so if the four of you on the planning staff that are going to talk tonight would raise your right hands. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the responses given and statements made in this hearing before the Planning Commission will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? If so, first state your name and then say I do. And let's start with Brandon and go in the order in which he introduced you. Thank you. Brandon, Mark, I do. It's Dave, Dave, David Edmondson. I do. You're on mute. There you go. I'll do it again. Uh, Cherry and Ethan, I do. And what about Scott? Uh, Scott Helgeson, I do. Okay. The floor is yours again. All right, great. So um, the purpose of a roadway classification map, um, that's what we refer to it as the city of Frederick. Some other jurisdictions uh, refer to them as thoroughfare maps. Um, but basically it's a planning tool associated with the comprehensive plan to provide guidance uh, for both the public sector and private sector on um, how we configure our, our uh, transportation system to adequately meet the needs of our future community. Um, generally, there's several purposes and goals of having a roadway classification map. Um, and I'll just go through a couple bullets that, um, that, that uh, 
the purpose of it. Um, one is to ensure efficient movement and multiple modes of transportation throughout the city, identify the right of way needs to be dedicated to accommodate future populations and development, uh, ensure adequate infrastructure serves the population of the future. It assists with identifying capital uh, improvement plan needs, reduces traffic in residential neighborhoods by ensuring adequate arterial or collector roads, and it's a tool to coordinate with other government agencies for long-term um, transportation improvements. With this comprehensive update, <clears throat> this, uh, this roadway classification map has many changes, um, almost 70 changes, and I thank uh, Charian and David for their hard work in determining these. Um, I'm sure it, it's taken uh, many hours and uh, it's a result of 10 years of growth and improvement um, that's resulted um, in these, these changes. Um, <clears throat> so with that said, I'm going to turn it over to David. He's going to summarize the change, some of the changes that have occurred, um, and then uh, we can take any questions. Thank you very much. Um, may, I, so, may I ask a question? I'm sorry, Alderman Russell. May I ask a question before we proceed? Sure. I think it might be helpful to run through what the different kinds of roadway classifications are and what that means. Like, what is a local road? What is a collector road? What is an arterial road? Just as sort of a primer before we get started for everybody. Sure. All right. For, um, for whoever that gets that. Um, so, um, in essence, um, a road hierarchy like this um, is uh, um, how do we m want to move traffic through our city? Um, so at um, our top level is um, our is our limited access highways, interstates. Um, those are ways that we that we might might move really fast through the city um, and maybe never. Um, and maybe never even stop. Um, below that is an urban primary arterial. These kinds of roads are ones that are meant to provide um, medium distance internal circulation within our city. So um, these might have a higher speed limit. Um, they won't have any stop signs um, or else few stop signs. Um, they are meant um, as um, a medium hop service, essentially. Ur um, urban minor arterials are designed uh, for um, accessing properties along them, uh, as well as to, to move traffic into the primary arterials as well. Um, these will still have um, uh, stoplights, not a whole lot of stop signs, but they are also um, uh, a little bit more walkable, a little bit more, um, um, a little bit slower. So, for instance, Market Street, that is one of our minor art, minor arterial roads, where um, it's clearly a major major street, but it is one that is used not just to move folks from A to B but also to allow people to access stuff that's along it. Urban collectors, those tended to have more stop signs um, as well as uh, being even more local. Um, these uh, sorts of streets, um, they will be fairly slow, but still primarily about um, bringing traffic out of out of neighborhoods and getting people into the rest of the street network. A local road is one that is just designed for access, but not really designed for for moving a lot of people around um, at the same time. Uh, so these roads are intended to be um, the smallest, the slowest speeds, and the quietest. Um, as, as we, oh, and they probably won't have um, a whole lot of stoplights, instead a, a whole lot of, of stop signs. Uh, and uh, if there was going to be some sort of traffic measure, it would be 
uh, it would be most likely along one of these roads. Uh, as we go um, from local to um, a limited access highway, um, the intent is to funnel traffic from that most from that most local all the way up. Um, because as we go up, we have a lot more capacity to move traffic. Um, uh, and as we and as we move down, we have a lot more of, we have a lot more ability to build a sense of place um, and uh, really build on the value of those build, build buildings fronting them. Does that make sense? Any questions? That was great. Thank you. So, um, so, so we did um, a um, re-examination of how traffic currently moves through our city and some of the ways that uh, it's planned to change. Um, uh, there were, as you can see, a lot of downgrades, a lot of upgrades, um, uh, a lot of um, new local streets as well. Um, one of the uh, first areas um, is up at the Bloomfields area, and that's way up with the north by that red asterisk, which um, is a proposed which is a proposed interchange. Willowbrook Road um, uh, used to be classified as a collector street. Um, the reason for that was it um, it functioned as a higher speed road uh, and um, it funneled traffic into higher capacity roads than itself. However, with with Bloomfields, um, that road is going to see a lot of changes, both in terms of its use uh, as well as in terms of um, where it goes. Um, because of the um, extension north of um, of that red to uh, a Opossum Town Pike, um, there won't be a need as much to have traffic along Willowbrook, and so traffic very likely will shift away from there. You'll also see a lot of new local roads. These are these are the roads that are. Um, proposed internally within within the Bloomfields development. Um, we uh, a number of oh um, a similar change happened in um, our southwest near Butterfly Lane um, and uh, that is down um, by 72, 21, 19, those sorts of things. Um, uh, so, um, the realignment of, of Butterfly Lane between Jeff and Pike and Himes Avenue, that again is to show um, the um, change that we're expecting to do there. We also have um, uh, a downgrade, so 20. Um, but Butterfly Lane right now is classified as a minor arterial uh, because, again, it is um, the way that people are going to get um, to, to, to Jefferson Pike and ultimately on to our, our, our local freeway system. Um, but with the realignment, that is going to end in um, a a cul-de-sac, so there's no need for it to be that high of a classification. Um, there were um, a number of other changes um, that are more in the vein of showing how people actually use our system rather than how we wish they used it. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, let's see if I can so um number 27 um bauman's lane from shookstown road to rosemont avenue that we upgraded to a minor arterial and we downgraded 
Shookstown Road, and that's number 26. Um, so people, so Shookstown Road, you would, was was on its whole length a minor art, a, a minor arterial. Um, but if people wanted to access access Rosemont, um, it, it didn't make sense to essentially turn right. Uh, and stay on Shookstown. And so so what most people would do is they would just head straight on Monteview. So we so we upgraded Monteview because that's how it's used and we and we downgraded that short segment of of Shookstown. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, one of the really big changes uh, is um, to the um, the the northwest highway, or, or sorry, the north south highway road. Um, so this has been long on our plans, um, but because of a variety of issues, um, the alignments beyond what it currently beyond that segment are pretty um, up in the air, and there's no guarantee it will actually happen. Um, so rather than show it on its whole length, we truncated it with simple arrows showing that we, we kind of want to have it move on from, from, from those current endpoints. But right now we don't have a good alignment for it and we don't really have a good way of doing that. Um, these are the um, major kinds of changes that we've that we've done. So so added roads to show where 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 new stuff will be built. Um, reclassified roads to um, show how we expect traffic to change as a result of uh, of these new roads being built, and um, and adjusted some of the small segments so that we can see actually how people use our system and not simply how we want them to or what feels um, pretty on a map. Um, those are so so that's my summary of, of those. I can go into some more some more detail if you like. Um, so let's actually see what kind of questions and what kind of detail that each each of the commissioners has at this point. Um, we also did get some write-in comments from Commissioner Burns. And um, this, uh, so David, have mm -hmm. you had a chance to look at that? Because we should read that into the record. And Brandon, yeah. have you shared that with David? Yes, um, we are prepared to respond um, to each of the, the five points, point by point. Um, okay. Either myself, David, or Charian can respond to that. Okay. Um, I think it would be good to introduce these now. Um, I know the first one, at least, was part of what David was just talking about. Um, so I can read through these, if that's acceptable. Okay. And then you all can respond. Um, so the first comment that Commissioner Burns had uh, was referencing the North-South Freeway. He says to just show it from Gas House Pike to Maryland 26, which is Liberty Road as a non-freeway, as a relief to Monocacy Boulevard. And then he does make a comment once the county failed to show it on their 2010-2012 comp plan, any hopes of it being a reasonable probability died. It, it looks, it, so that comment to me, even though he calls it a relief from monocacy, sounds like he is saying to only show the dotted lines, not from monocacy, but just from Gas House Pike to Liberty Road. So anyway, if, if you all can uh, clarify that and comment on that. Do you, okay, I'll, I'll sure. take a shot at it. And yep. uh, if uh, David or um, Brandon want to add on that plan. Um, yeah, certainly we had some discussion about the north-south road. If you look at the 20, the 30 plan, actually it shows the intent was to connect uh, US 15 with 
270, so it's much much larger um, footprint to it in what in it to reflect um, Commissioner Burns' comment. It, and I think when staff deliberation was to kind of look at it, um, that practical connection between the the two most most possible roads. So we thought. Um, the connection between 26 and Maryland, Maryland 26 and Maryland 144 made a lot of sense. And um, there was some background discussion on it with the REN annexation piece that came in um, along uh, gas house bike too. So that's what is reflected here. This is, goes beyond a little bit of what uh, Commissioner Burns talked about between gas house bike and uh, I believe Maryland 26. Uh, we think that we can continue that road to the south of Gasos by um, basically connecting to Linganore Road, which already connects to Maryland 144. So that's the generally the route that's shown in the the line in the map here. Um, so uh, there are uh, properties that are have a desire to annex into the city um, south of Wren Farm, uh, not necessarily. The town farm, but I think there is another farm that's um, to the to to the east side of Monocacy River. So I think potentially with these uh, uh, possibilities of annexation, I think it, it makes sense to kind of keep that roadway between 26 and 144. And certainly, yeah, you know, we're not looking at the the. And I think one of the discussion, it's a good comment. We have it in. In blue color, probably was the wrong typology for, as far as colors, and fully embraced the fact that this could be a collector rather than shown as a blue interstate color. <laughs> Not what's the intent when we kind of uh, collapse the road to those two uh, state highway? Um, I think ideally a collector would be uh, appropriate uh, classification. But I think the intent again is to connect 144 and 26 that way helping relieve um, Monoxy Boulevard and potentially even 15 to some extent. Okay, why don't we um, see if there's any questions and comments on this since this is such a um, a major strategy of of the city. So um, Commissioner Analis, any questions or comments on this one item? No question or comment, thank you. Alderman Russell. Um, it, it has changed over the years. Uh, I, I wonder why we call it the parallel highway. What exactly is it parallel to? I guess Monocacy. But I think it's important for the city to continue to show that that connection. Um, I appreciate it being in, in a little more of a fuzzy way because we really don't um, we don't have an alignment. We don't have a lot of the details yet and, and we're, we talked a lot about this during the um, the RAN annexation and actually are requiring that a, a portion of it be uh, constructed. So um, you know, uh, the city's goal is to make those connections. Um, I, I think Sherian probably has a point with the color coding um, and the intent of the road, but I, I, I would I would not uh, I would not change it other than that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and and I I agree with that. I do know where Commissioner Burns is coming from. And while much of this dotted line is currently on the county property, um, as Cherian said, there there are plans or possibilities for annexation. And if it doesn't show, as this is the vision, this is what the city intends to happen in the future, then it really will never happen. So uh, I can appreciate, again, what Commissioner Burns said, and I agree that what is shown here is the right alignment if the color is changed. OK, thank you. OK, um, so the second, um, the second item, you said, what is the purpose of continuing to show the Mount Phillip slash I-70 interchange that State Highway Authority and whatever FHWA look dimly on and would not likely raise to the top of the priority list by 2040? 
land use decisions made assuming its construction would be based on a poor assumption? Um, I'll go ahead and speak to that too. I mean, it's same if, uh, and David and Brandon could um, jump in. Uh, if you want to zoom in a little bit, David, um, to that area. Um, so th this is uh, an interchange we retained and I we, there was probably a little bit of discussion and Commissioner Burns does make a point in terms of uh, the the, the long-term feasibility of an interchange of the location. But I think what we've weighed that uh, that concern against the potential for annexation again into the city, those are areas with uh, with which has um, plans to annex into the city. Um, so I think at least for planning purposes or even long-term planning purposes, it's better to keep that on our um, roadway classification map at this point. All right, um, so we'll do the same thing. We'll take a roll call for questions or comments. Commissioner Manalis. No question or comment, thank you. Alderman Russell. None, thank you. Yeah, and I do not have any questions or comments either. So, and, and your explanation was consistent in part with what you said about the North-South Highway also so that made sense yeah um, just keep in mind that uh when you look at the overall lane um I i'm not quite sure exactly what that map called but that i think there are areas of interest uh to annex into the city if you recall those maps there are big pieces chunks of land on that uh, to the west side of i-70 that uh potentially could annex into the city so i think it will be short-sighted for us to take this off the map at this point thank you Three, um, JTP, J JTP, sla oh, Jefferson. Jefferson. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I should have actually um, practiced this ahead of time. Jefferson slash US 340 slash 15 interchange is already built and can be shown as such. Yeah, again, it's, it's, it's just a mapping update. It's a good point, I think. Uh, um, we just need to show the existing that interchange is already in. So uh, we just need to show the ramps as existing and the okay. connecting roads to goes out to Jefferson Pike, Maryland 180. Okay. Four, good move, good move. Proposing to show all freeways in one color, interstate and non interstate. You got a good boy there. Um, <laughs> We'll wait if anybody has a comment on that when we go around. And five, if there is no political, oh, he he goes on about, um, well, I'll read it. If there's no political will to remove all the, the all-way stops and 25 mile per hour speed limit on the residential portions on Christopher Crossing and Monocacy north of town, then it should be downgraded to urban collector. My preference would be to keep it at the current arterial function and go with the 35 mile per hour and roundabouts at all way stops. Somewhere this needs to be discussed, especially since the county is planning to build its section of Christopher Crossing to a similar section with no all way stops and at a 35 mile per hour limit. Yeah, it, it's a it's a valid cam common and uh, and I think this is something um, um, I mean I, I, my opinion my recommendation is to keep the the major arterial classification throughout and I think the way we need to look at it um, these these roadways the context also is important not necessarily with the, the color of the line on a map, piece of map, when you consider the portion of Christopher's Crossing within the county, it's a really, uh, the context is really different. It's, it's uh, the land use is, is built around it for uh, um, the higher speeds um, versus sections in, for example, in North Crossing, which is a much constrained right of way, the road much more closer to the roads. Um, 
and we have other sections of Christopher's Crossing coming through Vidier, which is much more active community. So um, I think we have to keep some balance. And I think, I, uh, I, so I would keep the classification and I think the city should have some flexibility in terms of the speed limit. Uh, we may have to go with 25 miles per hour where we may see more of a pedestrian and a community interaction. Um, so the speed is something that will be variable um, and, and to address the community concerns and safety. But I would still call it a um, major arterial. It's a good point about um, the traffic control, the, whether it's always stops and certainly something we need. We continue to, the city is continuing to work on to remove uh, stop signs and, and potentially roundabouts and other access control to 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 provide a, an experience for the user as it as a as a as a major arterial. I mean you, you on a major arterial you you expect uh, um, you do not expect always stop control. You would expect traffic signals or a roundabout. So uh, those are um, features we need to continue to work on. Um, so certainly the operational side of it will be addressing those. But I think for uh, the long term planning standpoint, I would recommend that we keep the, the, the primary arterial classification or major arterial classification and with the understanding that these that the road will look different um, at through, uh, you know, the, based on the context it goes through. OK, thank you. So uh, we'll do a roll call on the last actually two issues, uh, the one being showing all the freeways in one color, which I think we all like, yay. Uh, and then the number five, which is the um, the issue that Cherian just addressed with Christopher Crossing. Commissioner Manalis. Commissioner Manalis, no um, comments. Thank you. Alderman Russell. Alderman Russell, um, very, it's very interesting. My first official mayoral appointment was to a task force called the Christopher's Crossing, I don't know, task force. I don't remember, it was years ago um, when this road was first being designed and there were a group of people from the city, the county, there were residents of North Crossing. I don't know why I got on it, but I wanted to do something, I guess. Um, and we talked about what the cross sections, what what did the community desire these cross sections to look like? And we sort of came up with a, with a standard, um, but it's been a, it's been very difficult because, as Sherian said, the context of this road changes depending on where you are. Right, it, it bisects North Crossing right through the middle of it, and you've got amenities of the North Cro North North Crossing neighborhood on one side, you've got residents on the other that need to cross. So you know, 35 mile an hour speed limit is not a safe. Um, speed limit in that section, maybe in other sections where it's you know a, a different um, feel and a different use, but it is it does sort of um, it's another combination platter of of uh, roadway sections. Um, my my thought would be that perhaps we could work with the county and convince them to come down a little bit with their speeds, um, you know, in terms of as as Commissioner Burns mentioned last night, you know towards zero deaths, vision to zero, we're looking at um, safer safer roadways. Um, so that would be my preference and not that we would escalate our speed um, to meet to meet that cross section. That's all, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll just say that I thought that the explanation that Cherian gave made total sense. And so I, I support keeping it as you all have shown it. So, all right, so those were the comments from Commissioner Burns. Um, so I'll say, is there anything else that you all want to say or add before we go around and ask if there's any comments and questions on any other items? All good? All right. Um, and we may do this a couple times because it could be comments and questions from one commissioner might spark more from another. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, commissioner Manalis. 
Commissioner Manellis. Um, I really don't have any questions, just a comment. Um, seeing that this is actually my first time, it was kind of hard to understand how to respond to this document because there was no introduction or purpose as to what this was and what was expected. And so um, in hearing you say that in the beginning of the meeting, that was helpful. But just to get the document pulled turkey, I didn't know what to do with it. And then secondly, um, um, as um, um, Alderman um, Russell mentioned, you know, um, providing, you know, explanation for the different um, connectors, you know, you know, and and the different types of roads. Um, I saw the key. So, you know, I looked through everything. But I mean, that would have been helpful as well to know the difference between those. So for me, it was just kind of hard to be able to give you any type of response or comment. So I'm sorry about that. I apologize on my behalf. Uh, so just a quick question about that, not about the information that you gave. Will there be anything further that explains this in the comprehensive plan or will this map just be included? This map uh, accompanies the transportation chapter it's, <laughs> it's within that chapter. Um, when we went through the transportation uh, chapter, we had a short list of revisions at that time that we didn't really get into depth. And we at that time stated that we would discuss this later on. And you explained each of um, the classifications at that time in that chapter, the roadway classifications. I don't remember if we did or not. Um, okay. We could explore, if it's not in there, explore providing a definition of each of those classifications. Okay. In it, if it's okay. Not there. Um, actually, we we just got um, we just got another commissioner uh, join us, Commissioner Burns, and we just went through all of your items. I don't know if you heard any of that. Okay. All right. Um, so just to catch Commissioner Burns up a little bit more, we went through, or not we didn't go through, but David walked through kind of summary of all the revisions. And then um, Alderman Russell asked for an explanation before he did that of each of the roadway classifications. And then we went through all of your comments. And now we are going through the commissioner for the roll call for further comments. So. Next is Alderman Russell. Um, I'll just make a note that there's some spellings that need to be corrected and I'll send you that in another in an email. Um, number 43. Elimination of the Shookstown Road courtesy bridge. Um, that doesn't that doesn't please me. <laughs> That's been a that's been controversial. And if I understood correctly, that that bridge was part of a CIP to be replaced along with the Fairview Avenue bridge. So what's up with that? That's my question. Yeah, um, this is uh, Cherry and again. Um, a good question. I mean, I know it's been a little bit of a while, maybe something to re uh, to get back. But I think um, the the thought was that um, did again? Does that road connection provide any um, meaningful transportation um, connection, or could the the with the improvement to Bowman's Lane and uh, the new signal at Military Bond and, and Rosemont Avenue, could you know uh, would taking away that connection? would affect anything from a capacity standpoint. We we did take a look at uh, the amount of traffic that uses that particular connection and it was fairly very low. Um, and uh, from an impact standpoint, we're, you know, um, think that any diversion from traffic um, because of that um, disconnecting it um, will not have an impact elsewhere. Uh, so that's a thought and and uh, I know probably have much more discussion on it, whether it, it was not eliminated, fully eliminated, it will function as still has a bikeway, you know, some connection for, for the, for pedestrians and bicyclists still exist to Rosemont Avenue. 
Um, I have to admit there was, so it, it's a proposal, it hasn't you know, fully read it, but uh, I know Brandon or David want to chip in a little bit more in terms of thought on it. Just to, I guess, just to, to chime in a, a little bit more, um, that, that road has gone through many iterations. Uh, you used to be able to turn left onto it from Rosemont Avenue. And then they they just put signage and then they put the pork chop. And that's, so that's been mostly effective, although people still do. But during the last administration, we uh, the mayor then, mayor, not Mayor O'Connor now, um, temporarily closed access to that roadway from Rosemont Avenue to any traffic by putting up, we put up a flex posts or bollards or something. And there was a huge um, outcry from the neighborhoods back there that are connected by that road. So um, that might be a political question more than it is a, a, an actual um, accessibility question that I'm sure will be made. Yeah, certainly there is, it has been discussion on updating the, the, the bridge itself. There is a CIP project which is um, in the works. And certainly the biggest question on it, whether it's constructed for two-way traffic, one-way one traffic, what kind of bike or pit facility that needs to be, or should it be reconstructed or should just be a pedestrian bridge? I mean, there's a challenge. There's also a challenge with terminating the road. There is something, a turnaround need to be determined at that location. So that's, it's not without challenge and, and certainly um, it, um, need to be thought through um, further. Any further comments or questions at this time? Not right this sec, so I'll punch to anybody else. Okay, well, the next, I'll go next and then we'll go to Commissioner Burns. So as seems to have happened in this comprehensive plan um, process, uh, just what just what Alderman Russell said. So I had a few edits and my only question was on item 43. So, um, so I, I I made the note about community engagement, just, just thinking this, before anything is done, um, this really does have to be, uh, you do have to get with the knack and with the community since this gives them, uh, it gives that whole block, block and a half, or e even more than that, um, really good access out onto the highway as well as to Rosemont etc. Also, how will the impact of taking this away um, affect the intersection at Bachman's Road and Rosemont? So if you have more traffic going out that way than the traffic that is currently using the bridge. And then thirdly, it's just personally, uh, I have always loved that. It's always been one of my favorite things in Frederick. I think it's, um, I think it's charming. And uh, I would just hate to see it go. So, um, and that was my only question and comment to all of your changes. So, um, how about? Uh, so, I know Commissioner Burns that you're at a disadvantage of coming in only the past couple minutes, but we're going to punt to you, nonetheless. Madam Chair, before before you do that, you you asked yes. a question about oh. what happens with uh, Bachman's Lane and Rosemont Avenue, and perhaps that that project could be addressed. So we're we're up to speed on that. The realignment. Yeah, thank you. Um, that particular CIP project is under design. We started the design uh, beginning of this year, so that's moving forward. Um, just to give you a full context of what the road. Uh, Bachman's Lane would look like between US 40 and Rosemont Avenue. Currently, you do have a four-lane section coming out from 40, um, ending just, um, I think it's called Rock Creek Drive, uh, where the trail crosses. That's where the four-lane drops to the two-lane. And we do have the Bel Air uh, Farm project that will um, extend that four-lane section up to Shookstown Road. And they will install a traffic signal at that intersection of Shookstown and uh, Bowman's Lane. And the city project will pick from that location where there is a realignment of Bowman's Lane um, to align it with Military Road and a new signal. And, and so that's the extent of uh, you know, a lot of uh, 
capital improvements that are planned down the road to improve Bauman Lane itself. Uh, as far as uh, the impact of traffic routing, and I've, I don't have the right no numbers from us in front of me, but we did an estimate of uh, how much traffic could divert from the, the data we collected from as part of the, the Bel Air Lane traffic study. I think it was under 1,000 vehicles per day um, that was using the bridge. So uh, from in terms of that traffic, I mean, some of it is, of course, local. Um, so it, it, you know, the, from the local community standpoint, yeah, it's, it, 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 they will not have that immediate access to Rosemont Avenue. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, it's a balancing act. Do you, I mean, they, they, uh, they, they, of course, have to find another way, but then they don't have other traffic coming through the neighborhood either. So. Uh, it's a little bit of a give and take in, in um, how do we can ultimately connect the, the bike network through there um, to the Rock Creek Trail. So th there are some benefits to it. Um, certainly, we, I mean, the proposal does take away uh, connectivity for at least a fair number of homes. So, uh, and, and I said, there is that engineering challenge of how do you terminate road and pro provide so for some turnaround at that location and things like that. Uh, the detail hasn't been worked out, so we're looking at a very high planning um, level view of uh, the proposal. Uh, certainly, this uh, this may have much more of an impact for the decision makers and and some political decision making. Not to, that's one aspect, I and mean, then certainly the engineering aspect also plays into it. Okay, and thank you. Thank you. So, Commissioner Burns, you're on mute. You're on mute. Thank you. I just to add on to that conversation. I think the biggest safety aspect is the people that I've live in on the north side of the creek that want to go down Ballman's towards uh, the Golden Mile that have to turn left onto Rose. Well, they can't turn left. Um, never mind. I think it comes down to basically the cost of maintaining the bridge versus the benefit. Redundancy is great, but um, but but the ultimately uh, that's it's not a great facility. Um, and I, I think allowing the bike ped connection between the two is a great idea. And but anyway, I just want to say that uh, thank you for covering my uh, five issues. I, I, I think one or two of them might have been substantive. Um, I was generally very pleased with all the uh, judgment about all the changes. Um, uh, I think you guys did a good job. Um, I, I, I started teleconferencing at eight o'clock this morning, uh, switched from MemDOT to County Council at 4.30, and then switched from County Council, which I had to get dressed up for, um, to you guys. So I do apologize. Um, you guys are my favorite, but uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, you guys don't pay my salary. Um, but anyway, David, uh, Chair, and good job. You say that to everybody, I'm sure, Almost. but we will believe it. Uh, let's go around again um, for a roll call. Uh, so back to Commissioner Manalis. Commissioner Manalis, no question or comment. Thank you. Alderman Russell. I do not have anything further. Thank you. Okay. And I actually don't either. Um, before we, and I, there is one person who appears to have called in for public comment. So before we do that, I'm just going to ask uh, Commissioner Burns anything else? Um, isn't it five o'clock? No, I'm nothing. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. So we have somebody, uh, one person who's no longer on the line. We did have somebody. So, very interesting. We no longer have uh, a person on the line, um, so we have no public comment. Uh, it sounds, Brandon, do you have any uh, final words to add to this? I do not. I'm not sure if you want to give an opportunity for people to call in one more yeah. time. I can put the oh. phone number up. Thank you very much. Of course, of course we do. If Put I the phone may, number up. Yeah. All right. 
Here, I'll read the number uh, at, at the same time, 929-229-5669. And the uh, conference ID, the passcode is 298-099-226 pound. And we'll wait a minute. And I think somebody else was wanting to make a comment. Yeah, this was uh, Cherry and uh, again. Um, I don't know, David, if you can put the map back up uh, for a second. I can. Uh, give me a second. Oh, okay, Brandon. Thank you. Yeah, one of the changes or additions we did, uh, if you can zoom into where, where that Orchard Avenue comes from, East Patrick Street to South Street um, and uh, Traverses to East Street. Uh, so um, if you do east, repeat that. yeah, keep to the to okay. the to the Got right. It. Orchard Avenue from Patrick to East. Oh, forget it. it this one doesn't show that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, we, um, forget it. I, I think we talked about extending Orchard Avenue. If you know Orchard Avenue, it's um, to the east of Monroe Avenue. So there is. We, the city does have a little piece of Orchard Avenue on 900 East Patrick Street. Um, so the, the idea was that we will wanted to possibly extend that um, as a local road to connect to South Street and then extend it further through Bluegrass to that circle at uh, on East Street. Um, so that way you get a connection between East Street and East Patrick that will parallel Monocacy Boulevard. So it was, one of the, a, an idea, um, um, I'm not sure if that, um, well, I know it's not reflected here. Sorry, I was thinking that was in there. Um, well, I mean, since, I mean, is that something that we wanted yeah. to consider putting on here? No, I, I apologize. I pulled up the wrong version from the iDrive. Hold on just a second. My apologies. There we go. Yeah, the, okay, oh. you can see that, sorry. Yeah, if uh, Brandon, you can kind of follow that um, line. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's really where we kind of put a local street through so that potentially that could extend up to South Market Street. Uh, I know MDC is canvas just that they do have some access challenges with uh, the way the canvas is laid out and potentially that is a connection and to East Street for them. So, um, so it, it's, it's, there is some network possibility through that large tracts of land. Uh, to further expand the connectivity. So uh, just wanted to mention that. Um, one of the key, which I kind of particularly like, is we changed the classification for West 7th Street, or is basically the whole of 7th Street to show us as a, it as a collector, because one of the, I think, the next uh, big job that David has is to work on this citywide on-street bike network and and we uh, before we started we talked generally about the protected bike lane but we also have a plan to have a protected bike lane the entirety of 7th street from uh, Fort Dietrich all the way to East Church Street so um, the change in classification help us uh, further um, our mobility um, options and I think these streets kind of um, carry more um, meaning than just the color it show, um, and uh, as far as expanding our transportation options. Okay, well, that was really helpful. Um, so, Madam Chair, yes, that, that leads me to a, a question, um, and I know this is the roadway classification map, uh, but. As you talk about expanding our opportunities for mobility, is there is there a requirement or is there a reason that this is all motorized roadways and does not include 
or pathways, bicycle lanes, bikeways, all that, that is that something you want to keep on separate map or is there some way to indicate on here as well? Or is that just not the right place for that? If that makes any uh, sense at all. Uh, again, that's uh, Cherry and my, my feedback is that to keep it as a road network and, and I think um, maybe the next iteration after we roll out a citywide bike on street bike plan is to the next revision have some of that information feedback into this road network and say, um, does does any more information need to be? But I think for planning purpose at this point, I would say keep the it the purely as a road network. And at and a staff level, we had a discussion whether uh, between David and I, and typically some of these where we talk about road classification, we introduce the road section to it, but we don't typically do that with this. But uh, hopefully the next uh, round we go at it, uh, we will expand how we look at roadway classification map uh, and make it a little more informative and put some roadway classification gives you some of that ideas in terms of is it going to accommodate a bike lane and things like that. Okay, if I, that, add, go ahead. if I could add on just real quick, um, if you recall one of the immediate um, policy and implementation measures in the, the transportation chapter was to sub or um, to include a uh, bike and pedestrian uh, priority map uh, with this comp plan. So we'll be jumping right into that hopefully in the, once this is adopted. That, that's great. And I'm just thinking now maybe for, you know, a GIS project, if we had once we finalize all of these maps, that they could be different layers so that you could look and see how it all connects. Yep. Thanks. Absolutely. OK, um, so we do not have anybody who's called in for public comment. We're going to do one more uh, roll call um, just to see if anybody else has any final comments or questions. So Commissioner Burns. I'm good, thanks. Commissioner Manalis. I'm good, thank you. Alderman Russell. Nothing further, thank you very much. Yeah. And same here. So we thank you for the time and for the explanations and um, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. All right. Have a thanks. Bye. Have a good thank evening. You. Bye bye. Yeah, bye.